Let's do it. G'day all, welcome to the Hardly Adequate Podcast. My name is Desi and I'm a content developer and podcast host. Uh, for those that are listening or viewing, uh, just so you know, I have this on YouTube so you can watch the recording and listen to us at the same time, or you can grab this from any of your favorite podcast apps um, and listen on the go as you go. But uh, today I'm joined by Craig. So welcome, mate. Thanks for jumping on and joining me and um, spending some of your Sunday evening. Uh, or I guess afternoon for you because you're Perth. Based. Yeah, it's afternoon for me. Yeah. 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 It's good to be here. Thanks, mate. So I always ask the same question of everyone. And as we first get into things is what does a normal workday look like for you? Oh, that tends to vary because I'm a, I'm a director in Big Four. So when I, when I wasn't in consulting, it was totally different to what I do now. So now, you know, get up early, walk the dogs, try and listen to some podcasts. That's about the only time I get to, to listen to stuff. Um, yeah. And then the day just varies. It's like client calls. It's like business development. It's a whole range of stuff um, mm. around cybersecurity for various clients, which is totally different to when I was a, a CISO where you, you've kind of got a bit more... I guess structuring your day, you're doing more strategic mm. things. You're doing, or well, I was doing more strategic things, you know. Um, so it's 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 totally different, and I, I do find it a little bit chaotic actually, in mm. um, in big four um, and consulting in general because you just never quite have a, a a standard day. There's no such thing. It yeah, just varies. Something happens or you know knocks everything off. But when when you know when I was a CISO, you had at least kind of. You know, Tuesday was the executive briefing, Wednesday was this, Thursday was that kind of idea. So you had a little bit of structure to work around. Um, yeah. So it's good, but it's... Um, the difference it's between the, the external and internal viewpoints on yeah. when, you've got, when you've got customers, you're kind of responding to their needs, whereas internal, it's more project-based, especially... So yeah, role, definitely. More project and, and getting things done over time. Yeah, it's 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 more it's more strategic. It's more kind of taking an oversight view on projects mm. and making sure they get executed. Whereas in Big Four, it's more being part of each individual project and actually, mm. you know, doing bits or cleaning stuff up because stuff always goes wrong. Mm. You know, clients change deadlines or yeah. whatever it is, and it, yeah. it it creates a you know creates a bit more stress than you probably. Um, expect a lot when I joined Big Four I thought how hard could it possibly be um, <laughs> but no that's it, it's Constant a lot problem it solving yeah yeah it is it's, it's, it's just ongoing yeah. you know once you finish one engagement you roll into the next so you've got to really kind of ramp up quickly mm. you've got to you know you were doing say I don't know a strategy piece before and now you're being asked to do a maturity assessment for something else mm. on AESCSF or something like that so you've got to switch between the two yeah um, it gets even harder when you're doing both at the same time. So if you're doing a strategy for one and a maturity yep. piece for someone else, it's like, oh, what day is it? Yeah, yeah and getting confused right. between the different frameworks and stuff, for sure. Yeah, there's that, but you also... <laughs> I sometimes confuse clients. Um, yeah. only you're like, where you, were we up to? Where were, yeah, you do. You, you kind of go, yeah, yeah, we, we, did, a, we did a thing. Uh, oh, no, sorry, that wasn't you. <laughs> someone else. I um, can definitely appreciate appreciate that feeling and it it's uh those like little reminder meeting notes of like all right where exactly did we get up to so you can like review it is uh helpful yeah. but it still uh it still happens like even to the best of us i know it, it does i mean if, if you if you want to get into something that will keep you challenged then consulting's mm -hmm. a good way to do it because you you you're just exposed to mm -hmm. a massive amount of stuff whereas when you work for one organization you're kind of in that organization to so get really deep in the organization but you're doing whatever it is you're doing if you're the firewall guy then you're still the firewall guy in yeah. three years time whereas mm. if you're in consulting or some flavor of it then you know today you're doing a bit of firewall work tomorrow you might be doing some strategy work the day after that could be back to the firewall or something else so you, you get this broad kind of exposure mm. um, which is good but it's also nice. it's like a fire hose you know, you just get smacked with, with all this stuff and it's like, whoa, hang on. <laughs> yeah. What's important? So. Yeah, yeah. So let's go back a little bit before, uh, I guess, your current role. And I, I want to go back and kind of get a bit of history in where you think you first switched into security or 
cybersecurity or where your kind of trajectory you think you started to get to this point now? Where did I get to this point? Probably, for me, it'd be around about 2000. Okay. So I was, up until that point, I'd been doing a lot of IT stuff, but you're always doing a bit of patching, a bit of this, a bit of that, but we didn't, didn't really call it cyber anything back then. In fact, yeah. we might have even called it information security, and that was the extent yeah. of it. But it's probably about 2000, I started doing more. I, I was a data center um, lead for a mining company. So I was doing all that sort of big data center stuff, transformation type stuff, technology kind of programs. And we're doing a lot of security bits and bobs. And then I saw, I went to some seminar thing and Microsoft were giving out these, they used to give out these really thick books on cybersecurity for okay. free. Um, and I got one of them. I went, oh, this is pretty cool. And I started digging into that going, hey, you can do courses on this stuff. Yeah. Wow, that might be cool. And then I wound up doing my, I did a master's in, 2005 I think it was mm -hmm. on cyber security um, okay and it took off from there right you know it's um, that probably opened a few more doors than yeah um, it might not have otherwise done because that's how I went into the Middle East because over there the requirement is you've got to have a degree to even get in so okay. that helped but whether you need a degree or not I don't know and um, so the the master's degree that was an actual cyber security degree in yeah yeah okay yeah. To, I, in I'm, yeah, interested to hear like that that existed in 2005. Yeah, it's definitely, I know, it's weird. The, I guess the bachelor's degrees are probably newer now, but yeah, yeah. So the the so Charles the, oh, did a they still do them. We're doing master's degrees mm -hmm. um, in cyber. I forget what it what it comes out as with in all the funky, you know, you know how they break it down to bachelor of applied science and all that kind of stuff it wasn't one oh, of those. Okay. it was, yeah, it, was yeah. a, it was a master's master's of cyber security okay and it covered pretty broad stuff you had a few electives in there you could do ccna and all that kind of thing if you wanted to um or you could get like credits for it so that was useful because i already had my mcse and that's that kind of stuff right yeah um and it was great that that was that was super helpful because at the time there really wasn't a huge amount of information available on yeah. the internet about cyber yeah i mean there was but it wasn't like like it is it's now. not like now today got yeah so much stuff now mm. i i mean i tell you if if we had this back then it would have been awesome well for one i wouldn't have spent so much money on a degree um, but but there's so much stuff yeah and it's 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 amazing how you can you can just you know go on to even youtube Right. Forget about even the the, the the Udemy's of this world and that kind of stuff. There's mm. so much stuff on YouTube, mm. so many good people putting it putting content out that you can look at and go, oh, that's how that works. Yeah, you know? I think it's the other end of the spectrum now, though, right? Like it's almost information overload. Like you talk to a lot of yeah. people, and it's like, at least back then, if there was one masters, you're like, okay, I'll go do the masters and learn foundation. Whereas now it's like, where do I even start? Because there's so much, yeah. so much to and consume. And they, they've broken the masters down now. So you could, you've kind of got like masters of cybersecurity and then they've got one that have forensics. Okay. And it's it sort of, it's it started to fragment a bit as well. Mm. And it does make it super hard to, to work out what you want to do. And it's a mm. huge investment too. Yeah. In time and, and, and money and the impact yeah. it has on your life. I mean, we yeah. had, I think we had one child when I started my masters. And you know when you when you've got a new child and all that kind of stuff, and you're studying like mad hours as well, and you're working, and you're working. Yeah, it's, it's it was it was a big hit for me. Yeah, um, I did it, but it was I'm not a great student, so for me it was like a you know oh okay right I'm just going to sit just down get through it. Gonna, yeah, just get through it and oh you want to come out this weekend? Yeah, I'd love to, but I've got to finish an assignment kind of <laughs> stuff. So you you got to have that. You've got to have that kind of commitment to get it done. Yeah. Um, so for, for me, it was useful. But, you know, these days, I've worked with guys with degrees, people without degrees. Um, doesn't seem to make a difference in terms of their capability. Mm. But there are situations where having that degree is, is needed. Yeah. Um, just, to, you know, some organisation, one organisation I work for, if you want to go to a certain level of management, you have to have a degree. Didn't matter what the degree was, yeah. 
but you couldn't yep. progress without having without it. one. Yeah, yeah. And you kind yeah. of look at that and you go, well, meh. if you're going to allow people without with any type of degree, then clearly the degree doesn't isn't the thing. Whatever you've learned in the degree isn't the thing that you're you're using. It's the mere fact that you've got this piece of paper that yeah. allows you to go through the door. Yeah. You know, which is yeah. You, you I think have seen the same. Well, I, I think I think that requirement of having a degree had a time and place in history at a certain point. Yeah. And and hundred percent, I think for why well, I don't agree with like just have a degree in general. Um, but I still think there are some industries where degrees are, are valid and are required. But yeah, when when companies are saying you just need any degree to do this, like if you're trying to do be a manager in cybersecurity, is a degree in like interpretive dance studies gonna help at all? Like what what is that providing kind of thing? So yeah. yeah I mean you you you're right, you want your surgeon to have a degree, but cyber Look, there, there are there are guys out there that are super smart. They can they just pick it up, mm. and 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 they can they can see patterns and all that kind of stuff, and that's that's really cool. Um, yeah. But they don't need a degree for that. No. Um, the degree helps you study, if that makes sense. It helps you research, learn how to research, and and kind of in theory write. A bit better than maybe you do mm. but you know you can learn that as well there's plenty of courses online where you can go learn how to write technical documentation or you know powerful yeah. decks and that kind of gear but you don't need it i mean you could pick out something on udemy for instance they got they cover pretty much everything you'd ever yeah. want to know that's an interesting insight like i never and maybe this has changed now that the education industry has changed like covid changed the world particularly mm. in terms of formalized education with university degrees like they've all shifted as well to a online remote delivery and a lot of people are taking that up i think for me what i got out of university was definitely that how do you learn how do you problem solve like i i did an engineering degree so that's oh, yeah. you you problem solving that but i honestly think the biggest learning that i got out of uni was how do you work in a group where the group is mostly shit? And so it's oh. like, it's the soft skill people management of, which in consulting is a huge thing, right? Like you, you yeah. are going to come across with people in your own team or people or customers you work with where it, you need those soft skills. And university taught me that. And I think that's the biggest, personally, I thought that that was the biggest value add that I got out of my degree. Yeah. But if a lot of the degrees now are moving online, like how much are, are people getting out of that which is uh yeah. interesting I, I think so and, and when they're online you're writing for an audience of one mm. right the lecturer you're not you're not doing that interaction thing mm. that with you your peers in a, in a, in, with your peers yeah you're not doing group kind of presentations in front of of actual people mm. which is what happens not just in consulting but it happens in in the corporate world as well you've got to go yeah. stand in front of the cybersecurity manager and explain why yeah. you want this new technology, and and the 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 problem with all of that, and I I get a lot of people come up to me and say, hey, I want to get into cyber. What do I need? And it's the same as you, the, the soft skills, mm -hmm. that communication piece. How do you explain something in, in a language that they understand? Because we don't teach them that. You know, I've you yeah. I meet people all the time where they've come out, they've They've done Kali, they've learned about firewalls, they've, they're quite technical, and the mm. answer to every problem is a technical answer. And instead of saying, hey, we need to do this thing because if we don't, it's going to cost the business $100,000 a day yeah. and all this other stuff and translate it into that business language. Yeah. And then it, then it all fails and they sit there and go, oh, these people don't listen to me, they hate me, they, they don't want to talk to me, they think I'm, I'm just a nerd. And you go, well, actually, yeah, you are. Because yeah. <laughs> you're not you, talking you, in their language, you not, are this weird nerd. Yeah, you are. You you might be really smart. Yeah, but you've got a, and they don't teach that. No. They just it's it's not it's not taught in a in a way. So when when I see young consultants come in, they've come straight out of uni, mm. and they've got no real concept of how to do that, and they mm. usually struggle for about the first year, mm. realizing that they've actually got to talk to people. 
yeah. in a way that the people understand, and then their message gets across. Once they once they kind of the light bulb goes on, they're like, oh, okay, now I understand um, a bit better. Yeah, and they they become more useful then. Yeah, and do you find as well, like just thinking about this concept, like the soft skills and talking in front of people as well. Do you find that? there is a big difference in learning how to talk in front of people in person versus what we're doing now. So being on a camera and consulting in this way. Yeah, I, I think so because right now I can just see the top of your head same as you can see mm. mine. So I can't see what your hands are doing. I can't see, you know, like I'm waving my hands around now. I talk with my hands yeah. a fair bit. Um, when you can see that in person, you can kind of, you could also get a feel for, for who you're talking to. Yeah. Right. You can, you see a lot more cues, like visual body. It's a lot more cues, you know, cues, yeah. for instance, right now, if you had a mobile phone in front of your hand, in front mm -hmm. of you, I wouldn't know, but you could be looking down at it. Yeah. And true. I wouldn't know that I've, that I've lost you. Yeah. I'd just be kind of talking. Um, so at least when you're, when you're in front of people, you can actually see, you can feel the room. You can see what topics are hitting, um, mm -hmm. what words are landing, that kind of stuff. And you can adjust yourself and say, oh, you know, I've, I've just noticed a few of you are, you know, seem a bit lost if I'd not explain this thing yeah. in a way that you understand. And you can go back on yourself and actually recover because yeah. otherwise you just keep going, you know, you get fixed on this path. And I see this with consultants all the time. They've got a plan and they just speak their way through it. Yeah. Get to the end and everybody goes, I have no idea what just happened. Yeah. Um, and then they never want to speak to the consultant again because they didn't pay attention. Yeah, yeah. So... I also find the value in 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 person and presenting in front of people is also that pre and post meeting because I guess in the day and age yeah. now of we jump on Zoom meetings, you do your meeting, you're there for business. Like people are late, people have like back to back because there's no buffer built in, right? Because you oh, yeah, you're yeah. sitting on a laptop. But when you if you're having a meeting in person, there's like the banter that you have with people or just that camaraderie and an interpersonal skill set that you have before and after a meeting that can really change the tone and influence of a meeting that you're about to go into, which is a dying, like potentially a dying skill if you never do it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, actually, that's that, that's a good point because you, you always get that, ah, oh, Desi, just, I'm glad I caught you before the meeting. Just yeah. to throw this thing at you and you go, oh yeah, righto. And, and you can actually get some other work done potentially, or you can add some, some value to the meeting you're about to go into. Yeah. Because quite often, particularly with, Teams calls and stuff like that—they just appear in your calendar. And yeah. You go, oh, another meeting. So you rock up to the meeting and then. And people like, don't okay. put agendas in, and you're like, no "What agenda. am I even turning oh. up to?" Like, yep. I hate that. I hate when meetings don't have agenda, or they don't have like a clear topic, and you're just like, "Yeah, am I getting fired? Like, what am I turning up to this meeting for? Who knows?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or or you rock up and then they go, "Oh, Craig, I'm glad you're here. What's your opinion on this?" You go, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, "I'm sorry, I've just joined this project. I have." you know yeah you're I'm, just like not, what's going on what are we trying to solve yeah 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 what what can i do for you now uh i need to take that question on notice and I go no no we need an opinion now and you go but, but <laughs> i don't have yeah. enough information yeah so i hate no agendas it drives yeah. me nuts that's really cool i like i'm i'm glad i got to talk to you about this because i don't think i've ever covered it in any other podcast that i've done with someone about the consulting and like we talked about soft skills on the on the podcast before but not quite like this so that that was really good to to talk through um jumping back to i guess so you said your master's was good it gave you a good foundation what kind of other self-study courses or mentors that you've had in the past that you felt like really influenced you in your cyber career i had a couple of really good bosses i wouldn't call them mentors <clears throat> but they they definitely had a had an influence i had a manager when i was working in mining so it wasn't mm. cyber but he was always you know his first answer to every question was no, because then you can come back from it. If okay. your answer to every question is yes, then it's really hard to come back and go, oh, we can't do that. Right. Um, so that that was useful. Um, in terms of self-study, I did a lot. I did mm. a lot of certs, um, paid for by myself mostly, mm. but you know, the Microsoft MCSE, all that kind of oh, yeah. stuff early on, and of course my masters. Um, Again, there's so many choices now. Yeah. Back in the day, there was Cisco, there was Microsoft. Yeah. Or Juniper. <laughs> now, yeah. now it's like 
you've got lots of vendor certs, so you've got the AWS stuff, and a lot of that stuff's free. So there's literally no excuse now for people to not have access to learning mm. and improve their, their knowledge, not necessarily their experience, because mm. that's a different topic, but building up that, that knowledge base and at least having an understanding of, of various things. I know yeah. absolutely nothing about blockchain, right? But there are so many courses on LinkedIn that it yeah. wouldn't, or Udemy that it wouldn't take me long to go and, you know, at least get a basic understanding of yeah. that kind of stuff now. So yeah. it's, it's, it's dead easy. But I think the, the topic of mentors is a good one because I never had them mm. when I was starting. And now I try and help. I wouldn't call it mentoring. I do try and guide people, but I see Big Four is pretty good for this. So is a lot of consulting firms where they try this mentor kind of program, um, and it, it 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 seems to work. But we we I think need to find other ways of bringing people up to speed, not just mentoring, because mentoring is like a conversation, right? It's me telling you to go. You know, you ask me a question, I give you my thought. Maybe you go and do it. Maybe you don't. But it it doesn't necessarily give the kind of hands-on experience that i think yeah. we, we're lacking and it's um, not I, like i guess that's not the point of mentoring like i i would put that in the bucket more of coaching like if you want to give yeah true giving people that that experience and that hands-on like that and that's the role of like like something like a technical manager right yeah um, yeah definitely yeah or even your more experienced peers like if you're in a team if you've got more of a senior within the team like their role of educating the rest of the team kind of thing so but giving, I think giving people time to do that is key. The, the coach is um, is always hard. Yeah, it is. I mean, it, it technically, if, if, you're a, if you're in some kind of leadership management role, then that should be part of, it is part of your job description, but it's mm. never part of your timetable. <laughs> exactly, yeah. It's just like, we want you to do this, but we're not going to carve out any specific time. Just find time to yeah. do it. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Especially when you work in a, in a, like professional services where it's like yes. client delivery business development there is team development in there but it's like yeah. well, somewhere in the 37 and a half hours you've got to cram that in yeah which actually means you're doing 45 hours because yeah you know you've got to do this you've got to do some of this extra stuff which is fine to yeah. a degree you know? yes yeah yeah definitely uh, yeah it's really cool it's good to get your insight on that and like the self-study thing, like with Microsoft being like, cause there's still plenty of free Microsoft and AWS oh, yeah. courses these days. So, yeah. Yeah, the um, courses are starting to get more expensive. The more formal ones are like getting off the charts now. And some of the exams are getting mm. expensive. I mean, you can self-study, which is fine. So you buy a couple of books or a couple of online courses, but then some of the exams are four or $500. Yeah. So they're not the kind of thing you want to, you know, you've yeah. got to have a plan. That's the biggest thing I say to people. You need you need to don't just shotgun everything. Just you know what what do you want to do? Pick a pick a path, and yeah. then kind of align to that that path. I get people all the time. Hey man, I want to do the CIWSP. Cool. How long have you been in the game? Two years. Don't bother. You know. <clears throat> and like and, and also, experience. but also the question of like, why do you want that? Like, does the job you're going for require it? Like, are you going to get that job in the next two years or is that a 10 year plan kind of thing? So, cause like this, this P is more advanced. Like you need to be in the industry for yeah. longer and like, is it going to help you get a job? So I mean, yeah, having that plan thing. where you want to go. Problem is though, you read some of these job descriptions for like entry, entry, entry level roles yep. or roles with like two, three years experience. And you read them and you go, I don't even have that. <laughs> <laughs> You know, some I, jobs is it's nuts. Yeah, I like. I honestly think they're getting better. I think there's less and less that I've seen. Like the more job, mm. ad, especially with the whole system, because that was rife back. Like you look five, six years ago, like every job kind of was just like, oh, experience or CISP, and you're like, your entry level job, people aren't going to have CISP, so you want a senior no. person, but you want to pay them as an intern. But whereas now, I've found. Like I did an episode maybe a couple of months back where I looked at a few job descriptions and like oh, yeah. they they're definitely getting better and a lot of the time now they're very they're pushing the cert requirements from hey this is required to this is desirable so like if you do have it great but 
to apply for this job, you don't need it. Like if you're motivated and you, you're going to like work out for the company. And I think a lot more companies are hiring for, uh, like, I don't know whether you're in your role, whether you interview people, but a lot more companies are hiring for, um, uh, like cultural fit. Yeah. And, and if you've got aptitude, cause you, you can teach that, but you can't teach a good attitude necessarily. Or it's oh, ab- a lot harder. Ab- absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, it is. It is a lot harder. The, the thing with big four and that type of, it's when they recruit, they're looking mm. because they've got that kind of traditional accounting audit kind of background yep. thing going on. They, a lot of the, the people they bring in, particularly graduates mm. all come out of universities of some flavor it doesn't matter again degrees vary but it's it's that's the kind of what they're looking for because that's their their brand if you like yeah so some of the smaller consulting i say smaller um some of the other consulting firms professional services firms and corporations have the ability to kind of go well you went to TAFE or you've got a couple Mm. of certs so we can we can potentially have an entry-level role around that which is awesome Mm. um you know but it, it, it is a challenge. I was talking to someone the other day and I was saying, I want to do this, I want to do that. I said, why don't you just calm down and A, finish the units you're doing. Yeah. So get those out of the way and do as well as you can. Yeah. Network, but more importantly, go and look at something like the CompTIA stuff, yeah. which is reasonable, it's a decent foundation, and it will give you a similar level of knowledge, to be fair, to some of the more expensive options out there mm. and then you can build up because when I started well when I started out in IT I had no idea which way I want to go do I want to do this or I want to do that mm. so I played around did some stuff and then went, oh, I don't really like that I did I actually did application development years ago one of my first jobs mm. I'm not very good <laughs> so it was not it was not a great option but at least yeah. I tried it and I've got a better understanding of it but I wouldn't want to do it for a career. But, yeah. you know, you get these guys coming out from TAFE and places like that, and they've the first thing they want to do is become a pen test. You go, yeah, but there's all this other stuff. Have a, you know, have a think. Yeah. Have a play. Have a, have a talk to people. And then, you know, map out your plan from there and say, okay, well, if I do want to be a pen tester, then these are the types of courses or the hack the boxes or yeah. that type of stuff that I want to, that I want to kind of do. Mm. Um, so build my skills up. Mm. But if you don't want to do that, then, and you want to be a GRC person, there's plenty of GRC stuff out there as well now. But yeah. again, you've got to kind of lay out your, um, you've got to have a bit of a plan yeah. rather than just going, oh, CIWSP, that's the most amazing thing ever. I've got to have it followed yeah. by some SANS courses and I should go do this other stuff. And you go, well, maybe long term over the 10 years sure yeah but you don't have to ram it all into the first six months of finishing uni yeah i find i find the issue with uh graduates coming out of uni especially because uni university degrees are very it's hard to change the rubrics and mm. they're generalized because they're just degrees especially bachelor's degrees but people that come out and they want to be a pen tester or they want to be a stock analyst i'm like great you've just finished uni but when you're at uni like what ctfs did you do what especially pen testers like are you on hack the box like what what is your rank and how many boxes have you finished on hack the box and they go oh no like i've just used carly at university and i'm like (laughs) well as a pen tester even someone who does it day to day with a job like all of them i know like they've gone away from doing hack the box and stuff generally because they don't have time but they're constantly reading and breaking things and like trying new methods and it's a the technical jobs that you go into they're great like i love doing it in response but you never stop doing things and you never stop learning and when people are like oh, i want to do that and i've come out of uni and i haven't done any of this technical stuff and you're like well you're kind of at square one because it doesn't matter how much you've learned at uni if you don't have the hard skills it's going to be a, a slog and you're up against people who haven't gone to uni who have just been doing all this technical stuff. So, yeah, it's an uh, yeah. interesting dilemma it, for some to realise that, I think. It is, because I think you kind of touch on some of the stuff we don't really talk about because <clears throat> there's an element of curiosity built into that. Mm. If you're not curious, then, you know, this is probably not a career you want to get into because it changes every day. Mm. I mean, you look at some of the more traditional 
degrees, engineering for one, um, law, that kind of stuff. The foundational stuff doesn't really change. No. You know, the laws of thermodynamics have been that way for a very long time. They're not planning on changing them anytime soon. Cyber changes all the time. So if you're not curious, if you're not keeping up, it's going to be really difficult. But what I find is a lot of people get into cyber because they think they're going to make a huge salary but they're only in it for that kind of ah oh, cyber guys they make they make a lot of money well that's yeah. not always true but you've also got to keep up and if you're not if you're in it for the money then you're not going to be curious enough i think anyway to kind of dig into things and what you were talking about there kind of gels with that because i've seen people come out of uni and they they didn't do any of those kind of activities they didn't do any of the networking they didn't do any of that and they expect that that piece of paper is going to get them in the door mm. but their peers that spent even if it's the last year going to hack the boxes and networking events like acer and that kind of stuff are already three steps ahead so they've yeah. got a far better chance of getting in um than you have because you haven't you, you haven't used your curiosity you haven't tried yeah. to to kind of take a few steps forward but that 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 applies to anybody it's not specific to being at uni or tafe if you you know if you've self-studied and you haven't done any of this stuff and you haven't done any of the kind of reaching out going to acer or b-sides or whatever you've got around you mm. then you've missed an opportunity there to touch base because if your cv comes across my desk and i look at it and go who is this guy or mm. oh that's right i met them three months ago mm. i'm i'm more likely to look at the cv from the guy i met three months ago mm you know, because we had a five minute conversation, then yeah. I am to look at you. And I think yeah. that's a, that's a bit that gets lost sometimes when we talk to grads. They're, they're so focused on, I'm going to graduate, I've got, I'm going to have a degree and I'm just going to magically get a job. Yeah. That they kind of miss out that. And I think option. with, with cybersecurity as well, because there's not a hard requirement to have a degree and a lot of hmm. job, like it used to be, I think still, like there was, job listings that were like you need a degree or you need CISP or something and that's yeah. going away is that it's the competition is so fierce and there's so many people because cy cyber security is 100% we've got gaps but we don't have gaps at the entry level which is the issue so we've got this bottleneck of people coming out of formalized study other other pathways and that if you're not being interested like you said, networking, going to these events, reaching out to people and just have that curiosity about you. Well, you're up against someone who does have that. Now, there could be one position for 20 people and the people that are more curious, more interested are going to get a better look in than if you just went to uni and that's all you did. So that's like another thing I think grads need to consider is it's not a hard requirement, so it doesn't give you a leg up against someone who hasn't done it. And how much extra other work are you or interest are you putting in is another consideration to make. Yeah, 100%. But it, like I said, it's, it's not something, it's kind of like a one of those hidden secrets. Mm. You know, we, we, we don't tell people this stuff and then they pop out and they, it, they're surprised that it's not happening for them because they haven't, they're not aware of this stuff. You know, they, think... they get the, the kind of education, but they don't get yeah. But I think that goes to show, like, I think the messaging, when I listen to other podcasts or I look at content on LinkedIn or, or anything, I see this same messaging is that, especially from, if you follow any kind of cyber, actual cyber recruiters on LinkedIn, mm. it's all about, are you motivated and do you have the aptitude? It doesn't matter what you're doing, but do you have the, the interest to, to be in this industry? And so the information is out there. So if people are picking degrees and they're getting to the end of the degree and then realizing this, then it's it's a hard pill to swallow, but you haven't done your research on the industry. And I think that's pe people that are listening that might be in high school is like, I also wish I had this advice in high school because I, I started doing a math degree with no idea of where I wanted to go with that degree. Yeah. But pick a career and then figure out the best path to get to that career. Like, if I wanted to be a builder, going to university is probably not the best thing for me to do. But if I just like picked an architect degree, well, I'm not going to be hands on. It's all drawings and architecture and like CAD software. But maybe I wanted to be hands on and I should have gone a different path. And I think cyber is the same. Like 
pick the job you want or you think you want and then figure out the best path for that which is similar to yeah. like the picking your certs right yeah it is and and that that's where the the whole networking thing comes in mm. because then you can go and talk to a whole variety of people ask mm-hmm. them questions about what it is they do because let's face it most cyber people are really happy to tell you what they do yeah because quite often no one asks them <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's exciting. People, people love yeah. just like talking about themselves as well. Yeah. So it's yeah. yeah. So go, go and ask people. Go and ask some application developers what they do, some pen testers what yeah. they do, whatever it is. Gather the information. Ask them how they got there. Um, you know, ask them for some advice. Yeah. Most people are, are, are pretty open as long as you're open and friendly and you're not mm. trying to sort of just leech off them. But yeah. if you're there going, hey, look, I'm really interested in, in this topic... Mm. Um, are there some resources you can point me at? Yeah. And most people go, yeah, yeah. There, there's a couple of podcasts, and this this guy over here, and you know, have you done, you know, gone to this website, that kind of stuff. Mm. Go, you you kind of got to educate yourself about being educated, mm. if you know, and that's the best way to do it. Yeah, find someone who's who's done it. Look, even if you find someone who maybe, you know, they've done a few things. And they're not a fan of some of the things they've done. That's mm. a that's something you can learn from. Can you say, okay, well, why didn't you like pen testing? Mm. And learn from that. And maybe you realise that you don't like writing reports. You like pressing buttons and you like breaking into stuff. But there's a yeah. big difference between that and writing a decent report. Yeah. Um, and maybe you don't want to do that. So, mm. you know, go find out. Yeah. And 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 while you're doing it, have some fun. Yeah. 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 Join some of those like. Networking communities like ASAR, like Sec Talks. Yep. Um, yeah. Plug for mine, like join my Discord. There's plenty of people yeah. on there that are all different backgrounds. That, like, we have people all the time just asking. They're just like, "Oh, what do you think about this?" Or people who are in uni doing research projects that kind of reach out and talk. So, yeah, find a community that works for you is always good. Definitely, and there's, like I say, there's heaps on Discord. Yeah, yeah, plenty. It's, it's a information overload thing again, though. <laughs> oh man my discord's got like 30 40 channels which oh, i know yeah. it's not a huge amount but that's i can't keep up it's like yeah man. <laughs> yeah i can't i can only keep up with like three or four servers at a time and then i'm like overloaded yeah. huh. all right so jumping back to yourself now what do you think's been a highlight in your career so far um for, for me look I, I spent 10 11 years in the middle east mm. as a as a CISO, well, I wound up as a CISO. So probably, probably that before before that, I was working in mining as a cybersecurity officer um, for APAC, which is great. But going to the Middle East meant that a I had to change my whole view of the world. Mm. So from that perspective, that was that was really exciting and scary. But also because of the geopolitics of where I was, you yeah. were constantly exposed to cyber threats mm. pretty much all day every day in mm. some flavor so you weren't you you weren't getting bogged down in some of the less interesting BAU type activities you get in some organizations you know when we were doing firewall rules it was because there was something going on we weren't just you know just tweaking for no reason. Just tweaking for no reason yeah. and, and that kind of stuff. We were doing it because there were there were active threats mm. in play. Um, I got involved in a couple of major cyber incidents as well. So that that was, in hindsight, super exciting. Mm. While it was happening, not exciting at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, retrospectively, but, you're like, this was awesome. At the time, you're just yeah. like, god damn it. Yeah, no, that was the, there were there were some hairy times, but no problem. Yeah. Back then, you but you could learn so much. Yeah. In in those environments, because it, it's it's so rapid. And when I came back to Australia, I'm like, oh man, I've got a, you know, I've got all this really cool knowledge I can bring back, and I've been using it a lot with mm. all of my clients, so they get to benefit from all the stupid things I did. Um, yeah. Way back when. Yeah. Um, so that's that's really good. If you've got an opportunity like that to go and kind of really stretch yourself. Mm. I definitely recommend people do it. I don't necessarily mean move to the Middle East, but you know, some people like to sit in their their comfort zone, and yeah. there'll always be the firewall guy. 
And if that's really your thing, cool. But if you want to, you know, if you want to grow, if you want to expand in cyber, you've got to kind of try and take on some stuff that's outside that. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. get out of the technical, go to a bit of GRC for a while. Mm. Um, and, and like, you know, see the other side of the, of the policy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well I, I like i suppose as well like you can then understand because no matter what technical role you're in you're going to write a report at some point and make recommendations yeah. and doing grc or working internal you can then understand why your recommendations don't always get implemented because of budget restraint politics there's like plenty of other underlying issues that are more critical elsewhere in the business that aren't yeah. necessarily <clears throat> cyber so you can gain I think quite a lot of empathy for the customers that you do have or the people that you interact with when when you're in that position for, for sure I mean when, when in, in my Middle East gigs I got really exposed to the business as well because mm. you know over there there's there's a huge amount of money floating around yeah um, you know it's it's crazy but mm. you still got to go and justify things you still got to yeah. go and explain why even though you're in Qatar and no one's ever attacked you before, why it's important to go and do these things. Yeah. And you've got to learn that that business element as well. So that's mm. that's probably the other takeaway. I got swamped by cyber attacks and I was getting beaten on the other side by the business yeah. around how do you communicate that stuff in a way that they understand. Yeah. And eventually, you know, you learn how to do it. And then you start to see, then you get to see progress. Mm. Up until that point, you you don't get progress. You get lots of no's, right? But when you yeah. when you're up in front of the CEO saying, okay, this is this is why we need to do these things. This is what we need to do, and it's because of yeah these things. And this will this will help you know protect the thirty thousand barrels of oil a day we're producing or mm. whatever it was. And they go, ah, that makes sense. Sure. Yeah. Here's yeah. some money. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So what about yourself at the moment, outside of potentially cyber or, or something else? Like, do you have any passion projects that you're working on? Yeah, me. I'm trying to get my Work on you? back. Yeah. 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 Nice. Yeah. One of, the, one of the, I used to play rugby and yeah. I got injured and then I stopped playing. Yeah. But I didn't stop didn't stop all the other things I was doing as a rugby player. <laughs> oh yeah. The things like where you, you eat so much because you're training yeah. so much yeah. and you're just like, Oh, I'm still hungry all the time. I've definitely I'm still hungry. That, that yeah. in the past. Let's go do yeah. a few beers, yeah. that kind of stuff. So but also, you know, when you become a director in Big Four there's a lot of there's travel involved, there's all that kind of stuff. So yeah. you, you tend to, you know, hop on a plane or whatever it is and go somewhere. And while you're there, you're with clients or whatever. Mm. So you, you kind of, uh, well, I do, neglect myself. Um, mm. So I'm trying to get that back on track, um, you know, so I can run around a bit more and, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. It also helps. I mean, it helps you focus as well yeah. when you're that, you, you're that bit more alert and you're, you're, you know, you can think a bit clearer yeah so, that's, that's that's really the, good to hear and like taking care of yourself is like you can't you wouldn't be able to do this job if your health deteriorates so taking that first step nah. of prioritizing yourself is so important yeah and again that's that's something they don't teach them teach mm. anybody is that whole is that kind of broad holistic kind of thing the soft skills mm. are one thing the hard skills the other but you've got to take care of yourself i mean hell yeah. you've got mental health issues in this industry from the level of stress yeah you know, when i was i used to do, <clears throat> well i did several crisis events in the middle east mm -hmm. and the level of stress involved mm -hmm. is insane for some of them you know when you're dealing with people's lives and that sort of stuff you're sitting there that that weighs on you <clears throat> but yeah. it's the same with other cyber events anyway you know yeah. oh we've got to get the the backup you know we've got to do the patching at two o'clock in the morning so someone's got to stay out late and all that kind of stuff that yeah you know so the hit the the health piece is is super key. Yeah, you know, I'm still and not just to a Red Bull. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's it's interesting as well. It's not just um, like I I learned this from I responded to a medium sized law firm, and they 
their crisis response was phenomenal just how they how they handled it from start to finish but even things that i'd never even thought about before where they so they had their team because you can't tell people not to go home and for them to actually listen like sometimes mm. that just doesn't happen because they're like stressed they want to sort it out so what this law firm did is they uh they were providing breakfast lunch and dinner catered for anyone that was there working during those times they organized a hotel nearby with just like rotating rooms for their staff to go and sleep it was like a five minute walk um but then stuff like uh i think it was like the lead um it admin is he had like a young family and so to other people that were also involved they were offering this but they were just like okay well what does your family need for assistance like you're not home like what does your wife need help with, help with or so it's just like obviously at a very large scale like this worked really well because it was a medium-sized law firm they all knew each other but from an incident response and crisis standpoint like looking after their people first and foremost was like second to none like i've never seen that ever again or um anyone even consider that kind of thing in the past but yeah looking after even yourself if you're in a crisis situation like looking after your family and like making sure that they're okay while you're responding to this kind of thing is also important yeah i mean i i, I did a major incident and it lasted for three months mm. so the first couple of weeks we, we we laid on food and we'd send people home but yeah. never heard of of looking after the family mm. there's always the oh you're too tired go home but never the watch your family it was always like yeah. oh we've got to solve this problem let's yeah you know so that that's actually pretty cool well, it's, so from my experience it is actually like um it's built into the military right so my background is um yeah. air force but even across the services like when you get deployed you then get like a brief into well here are the family services that can help while you're away so like oh, yeah. if your partner gets into trouble or they need help in the garden like here are the free resources you can access that defense will just pay for so it was interesting i kind of always took that for granted when i was in defense because it was just there but then it wasn't until i saw it in the corporate world where they took care of people and their families that i was like oh like this is built into the military but it's not something that we talk about in industry especially no. for crisis oh. roles so you you're right because I, I think there's a tendency to just assume that any of the technology fields can handle whatever you throw at them yeah and they don't think about what happens outside of that because most of the people, when you've got some sort of cyber crisis, it's really the cyber teams, the infrastructure teams. Yeah. And then you've got the, the business thing, on the yeah. other side. Yeah. The business on the other side kind of go, oh, why is this thing not up? Yeah. But they're not thinking beyond that. They're just hassling the, the technical the tech teams, teams going, yeah. get it back, get it back, get it back. Yeah. Um, so that, that that's actually, I'm, I would imagine that's a rarity. Yes. in terms of looking after the family but that's yeah. that's actually pretty cool you see it nice you see it more, more in that. like yeah definitely the established ones like i'm i'm pretty sure like if you looked at things like um crisis response with like police or firefighters or ambos mm. like where it's more of like that um family concept around looking yeah. after your people you would see that which is kind of you're looking at it from a more government perspective but yeah within industry especially as we grow out these incident response teams and crisis teams it's something to consider uh, you just don't see a lot of it fortunately so uh, pity yeah um what's your goal for the next six to 12 months that you've got you've got got any kind of thing on the horizon with projects or oh you've got your fitness right so that's one got thing the fitness that that's that's, on. that's really the major one because i've i've come to realize a couple of things one the the fitness no one's going to do it for me, so yeah. I've got to sort that out myself. But I'm also trying to do a bit more with the community. Um, mm -hmm. It's taken, as I've got older, I've realized that there's more to being in cyber than just being in cyber, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. I want to try and do some more with the community, try and you know do some B-sides and some Aces and that kind of yeah. stuff again. Um, I did them a few years ago, but then sort of dropped them. But mm -hmm. just get more involved in the in the community again because mm. you know whether my opinions are valid um, I'm sure there's something someone can learn from 
even if I'm wrong. Um, you know, but I've been around the block a few times, so it, it's kind of I'm not at the end of my career, but I'm also not at the beginning of my career either. Mm. So there's got to be lessons in there. There's got to be information in there that somebody could benefit from. So I'm mm. trying to do a little bit more of that as well um, to just try and try and help out. You know, okay. when, I, when I was early in my career, I was like, oh, man, let's go do cyber, let's go do technology, let's go learn about all this stuff, let's ignore everybody else. Yeah. Because I used to be, like, super technical. Um, and now it's like, well, no, how else can we help people? Yeah. You know, because clearly these people aren't, they've come out of uni or TAFE or they've got two or three years' worth of experience, but they've never done a, an incident response element or they've, you know, they've not written a strategic plan or any of that kind of stuff. How can we kind of and some of it's coaching but that i'm talking about more the community stuff yeah i'd like to do a little bit more mentoring um and i'm probably gonna regret saying that because people start pinging me uh, <laughs> yeah but that that that's my kind of thing for the next 12 months yeah i need to i just want to kind of expand the horizon a little bit on that one okay um, really cool on. yeah 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 i like i was actually recording another interview just before this one and it was um yeah, similar, uh, who I was interviewing, so we're in a similar part of our careers, like it, we've both been in the industry for about the same time. Um, but also, yeah, just being present at those events and giving, I think, yeah. just being present and giving people an opportunity to have someone else to talk to. Um, so when we're talking about like grads in particular, like just a different perspective because we all have different pathways into the industry yeah. and we have different experiences and have done different degrees to get in so like you've done the cyber masters um like i come from an engineering background so yeah it's like those different perspectives on on where the industry is and where it's headed to is always yeah. good i i actually think i'm probably more interested at this stage in helping people who are transitioning in mm. rather than the grads yeah, I think I'm. You know, the ones that are kind of transitioning in have have done something. Mm. You know, maybe they've got five, ten years as a I don't know accountant or something like that, and they mm. want to transition over. I think that's probably that's probably going to be an interesting area to kind of talk to and and, and interact yeah. with because they're they're not twenty two, fresh out of uni, yeah, full of bright ideas and too much energy. <laughs> they're kind of in the middle and they've they've realized that they want to go and do cyber yeah. and i think yeah. that's that to, to me that's that's a little bit more interesting because they bring they bring experience with them that mm. others don't have and yeah. you know i want to try and harness some of that actually yeah Somehow. it's actually I worked it out yet <laughs> it's it's honestly really fun so i've done it twice now where i've helped mentor um people who decided to do a career transition into cyber. Okay. One was a teacher and one was, uh, came from a marketing background. Um, and it's really interesting when you start talking to those people and they're like, oh, I'm gonna be starting from scratch. But then when you really dig into, cause they have all this life experience yeah. and you're like, well, what do you wanna do in cyber? And then figuring out, cause they obviously have a, a padded, quite a padded resume cause they've been in their profession for 10 years what are the skills that are transferable? And a lot of the time I find when I've helped is like, they have all these skills that it gets them like 75, 80% of the way, but they don't know the terminology that cyber recruiters or companies are gonna understand because they're coming from such a disparate um, industry. Hmm. So it's like, it's great to hear that you wanna mentor someone because helping people out to figure that out because we need more people in the industry that are, have different ideas. That'll be really awesome to, to jump on board. But um, yeah, I like my last mentor that I have, I literally put it out there on LinkedIn. It was like, who wants who wants this? And it was like, they had to drive it themselves. And yeah. Um, did they kinda, did like, you get swamped when now. you did that? <laughs> I did a little bit. Um, it was okay though. Like you could kind of pick up who, who was serious. Um, so I had like maybe three chats before I selected someone that I wanted to be um, to mentor. Um, but it was, yeah, one of the most enjoyable experiences to see someone, especially someone who's driven, who like you could, mm. they they knew that they wanted to do this. It was just 
it's that information overload. So they're like, oh, this is what I've done to start with. And some of the stuff they're like, oh, next I'm thinking of going to do like a bachelor's degree. But they'd already done like some of the CompTIA stuff. And I was like, well, what so, job do you want? Like, does your job actually need a degree? Like, that's a four-year investment. And we turned around, I think, uh, I think he got a job in about 10 and 11 months. Um, nice. And now works for, for Rapid7. So really good company. Oh, wow. Doing a technical <laughs> job. Um, came from a marketing background with no technical skill. Um into into that role so yeah it can be done and it's just translating like he had all these soft skills already so that was his, all transferable his comm skills would be amazing yeah yeah in crisis management right like how yeah. good is that like when you have to write a press release or something like he was doing that for the company already and i was like oh you've got this skill set that would go great in an instant response team and now that's what he's doing so we're well, not not writing press releases but i mean like he's in an instant response team yeah, but he can communicate. He can, yeah. you know, that'd be, ah, that's, yeah. that, that's a good story. I like that. Yeah, yeah. But there's plenty of people out there. It's just, yeah, they need to reach out or get a mentor and just that initial push in the right direction sometimes. Yeah, yeah. My, my problem is I find it hard to say no. It's like, <laughs> it's like, you yeah, do need to be, this. yeah, you do need to be strict about it. And, and I guess mentoring is like, the mentee is doing all the work. They're like yeah. they're leveraging your knowledge, your experience, and it's if someone's really dedicated and they're like they're trying to find time in your calendar and then utilize that. So that was a big thing for me is I always said like if you if you don't have any questions, you need to cancel the session. And if yeah. you're turning up with no questions, you're not going to be a mentee of mine very long. So it's that setting that boundary and expectations yeah. with people um, because like everyone's time's valuable. You don't. Don't waste it, kind of thing. Yeah, I, I, I've been considering. Well, I read an article in HBR or something like that where they were talking about kind of reverse mentoring. Mm. So instead of so what you know, instead of sort of I guess a, a younger, less experienced person trying to seek a a mentor, the older, more experienced person was trying to seek a younger, kind of more clued in, um, yeah, person, you know someone that can explain social media to them and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. That, but, yeah. You know, but that, that kind of, you know, because there's, there's, a, there's a definite kind of gap um, yeah. in understanding as well yeah. that, that I think needs to be bridged. But I, I, I've always seen mentoring as a bit of a two-way street. Yes, it's, oh, it it's is. Yeah, yeah. the mentee's got to do most of the work, but the mentor's got to be able to get something out of it, not just to feel good, yeah, yeah. warm and fuzzy, but, you know, the, the 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 marketing one, for instance, you could probably learn some stuff about marketing and communication oh, yeah, I learned from heaps. them. That, yeah, that yeah. Kind of stuff, yeah. So that that that's a win. As long yeah. as both sides are winning, um, mm. I'm up for it. Yeah, yeah. You, if it's like if it's a one sided, it's like yeah, no, nah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get into that. But mm. no, that's cool. Like no, nah, there's definitely. I think the mentee does learn a lot more. But yeah, just because you're interacting with someone and and because they're interested, you learn quite a lot about their career path and their skills and everything. And, and funny you say that the first mentee that I had was older so like it doesn't matter it's, it comes down to experience right so yeah it does uh, and it doesn't matter how old you are now like a career transition into cyber is if you're keen to learn like it doesn't matter you can always make that shift across yeah 100% yeah alright mate well we've been talking for a while I'll, I'll finish up I've got two more questions um, sure, far away. Before, before we leave, <clears throat> so what do you do? Short. <laughs> yeah, what do you do to get away from work and unwind? Uh, th these days, you know, my kids are sort of nineteen and twenty-one, so there's a lot of family stuff yeah. these days. Um, when when I was younger, it was sport. Um, mm. You know, we got friends with a holiday house up the coast, so we can go up there occasionally and that kind of stuff. Just get away. Yeah. But usually, it's, it's it's really the family stuff at the moment. And mm. and on the odd occasion I get away, it's just disconnecting. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll keep Netflix, but everything else goes. <laughs> I'm not That's completely not fair. talking to anybody. Yeah, uh, you know, the phone's on if I need to call someone, but I'm, I sometimes I'll even take email off my phone. Um, I do that. Yeah, if I if yeah. I'm going away, or I'll I'll sign out of, yeah. of the I'll sign out of Slack and of my work email to yeah disconnect yeah. a little bit. Yeah. And just, just keep that and, you know, try and, and, and get away. I walk the dogs 
yeah. every day as well. So that's yeah. that's always th- that helps a little bit. You got to do something every day. Mm. I think whether it's walking or going to the gym, or, but you got to do something that's just you. Yeah. Well, be active, but it's just you. There's mm. the family stuff, uh, but then there's there's kind of you time where mm. you're by yourself, even if it's only for half an hour. That actually yeah. helps me sometimes just to unwind and mm. you know, because I do I, cyber people tend to, I think, get a little bit overwhelmed with other people sometimes. Um, yeah. You know, and you, you I, I find I've, I've kind of, I've got to get away sometimes. Yeah. I just want to um, just be by myself yeah. somewhere quiet. So that's how I sometimes unwind. You know, you go to lunch and you just sit there on your phone sc- doom scrolling. Um, <laughs> but at least it's time away. But at least it, it's yeah. time away, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah 100%. I can, I can definitely get that. Um, and now this, this last question that I have for you, we've kind of touched on it throughout our chat here, but maybe you've got some other pearls of wisdom but what recommendations uh, do you have currently for people that are outside the industry considering a change so i guess this is like less the grads kind of what we were talking about there yeah. at the end like a career uh jump into cyber what kind of things would you recommend a couple of things look we've talked about being curious right mm-hmm. you, you that that to me that's almost like the your ticket to play you can't do it without that yeah but i think a lot of people are worried about you know you were up here you spent 10 years in marketing or whatever how do i transition if you can do that within your company or within your industry way way better i see people all the time they go yeah i want to get in cyber but i you know i'm worried about dropping salary and that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. um and i know you you've you've had that conversation before with with others and but it's i think it's super important if you can stay within your industry you already know people yeah right you, if you can do it within your organization, mm. you may be able to keep your salary, but mm. I'll tell you what you are keeping, you're keeping all the benefits of working yeah. for that company. It may take a bit of a drop, but it's, you know, you still get all the parental leave and all the other jazz um, that you're entitled to by yeah. staying in the company, if you can do it. Mm. Um, if not, then it's back to the networking thing mm. again. It really is. Get out, make a name for yourself, mm. um, just by talking to people. Yeah. It's, it's 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 really the only way. I really wish someone had told me that when I was at uni. <laughs> I spent a lot of my time in pubs and parties, um, which is not networking. Um, <laughs> and I, I really wish I'd, I'd actually spent the time to yeah to do that kind of stuff and get into industry type things. But really, the, the other thing I will say is go and get self educated. Right? Don't don't wait. No one. If you think you want to get in then go and do it. Don't wait for people to hand it to you because no one's going to give it to you. No one's going to go, oh, Craig, you, you know, do you want to go do cyber? Um, here's some money, yeah. go, go pay for stuff. You, you're going to have to do that yourself. You're going to have to think, yeah. of, again, it's about your plan. What's your plan? Where do you want to be in five years, 10 years? Mm. Um, you know, you've got to be that self-motivated, that kind of get off the couch and hunt it down and be a little bit aggressive too. I don't mean rude, but you you got to kind of push for stuff. Mm. You've got to kind of little bit of little bit of fight to to get hold of something. It'll yeah. make it all worthwhile as well. Once you get it, it's like yes, I did this, rather mm. than oh that was cool. I uh, just got a job. No, you want to be like super excited, super pumped. Yeah. Be energetic. Yeah, and it kind of like those kind of points that you're making there. They they go hand in hand like that. Mm. When you network and you make like friends or you start to get peers in the industry and then you start putting your plan together for what you want is you can bounce your plan off those people that you've networked with and you can go hey yeah. like this is this is where i want to be in 12 months like what do you what do you think um and get that feedback especially if you if you have an idea of like what job you want to do and what company you want to work for then you can talk to people in that company like re- don't be afraid to like yeah reach out or if you see them at event especially if you see them at a conference like people love chatting at conferences but yeah you can always like reach out on linkedin or something else like i i get questions all the time and i'm generally pretty happy to answer them like yeah most times <clears throat> i've spoken to people and they talked to them and we've got we've really got nothing in common in terms of the cyber activities mm-hmm. they want to do but then they say hey listen i want to get into i don't know application development or something like mm-hmm. that devops 
and I'm talking to someone else, and they go, "Yeah, we're looking for a dude who wants to do DevOps." Yeah, that's that's that, where like, the magic happens. Yeah, that incontinent, the networking by proxy almost. Yeah, because you you've just put yourself out there, and then yeah, yeah, someone has that idea. And yeah, at least 100%. you can connect them and go, "Hey, listen, you two go have a chat, and I don't know what happens yeah. after that." But yeah. if if you're not out there no one's a mind reader so if you're not out mm. there waving your own flag a little bit going this is what i want to do yeah um you know what who can i talk to that kind of stuff then mm. you you're going to be doomed to to mm. sit on the couch and wait for something that's never going to come even yeah. though you want to be in cyber so you then you're going to spend your whole life going oh cyber was going to do it but you know <laughs> never got around to it never got around to it yeah yeah that, uh, which is even worse yeah <laughs> yeah definitely so, yeah, well, put yourself out there. Yeah, no, that's really good. Well, mate, thanks for joining me on this podcast and spending some of your Sunday having a chat and sharing your your pathway and all your knowledge that um, hopefully has helped at least one of the listeners out there that are um, that's listening. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure someone like I've definitely picked up stuff. I always learn something new when I chat to people, so it's been a pleasure having you, mate. Thanks so much. Yeah, oh, lovely. I've been, really enjoyed it, Desi. Might do awesome. this again. <laughs> yeah yeah i'm always i'm keen to do panels later on so there's always like different things that we can talk about and have an actual topic that we we focus on which would be really cool oh yeah yeah you know that that that'd be cool yeah put me down <laughs> definitely all right awesome. well thanks everyone nearly all of the content that i do is free and you can check it out on youtube i've got plenty of videos there i've got my own website hardlyadequate.com that's got links to the discord and also if you'd like to support the channel there's a way to donate as well. But thanks everyone for listening and I'll catch you all next time.